to apologize for the delay in commencing. We were waiting for one juror to get here, but uh, they're here and we're ready to go. Is there anything that the court needs to address before we begin? Yes, can we approach for this? Yes, you may. <coughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Trust you had a good night. Just a reminder, um, I know it's been a long, arduous week, but when the court says 9 o'clock, we intend to begin at 9, and so just encouraging compliance with our time frames. Thank you. When we broke yesterday evening, the state was about to present rebuttal uh, testimony, and so we're going to give the state an opportunity to do so and call its witness. Thank you, Justice. State calls Keon Hayward. And if you would please remain standing and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you will give before the court in this matter will be the truth, yes. the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. You can take your hand down and have a seat. If you would please make sure you're uh, moved up and speaking into the microphone. If you would introduce yourself to the jurors, please. Hi, good morning. My name is Keon Hayward. And could you spell your name for the court? Um, Keon, K-E-O-N, Hayward, H-A-Y-W-A-R-D. And how are you currently employed? I'm currently employed with Quick Trip Corporate um, in their division of protective services. So working security at Quick Trip? Correct. And where are they based? Um, I'm based in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. And did you travel uh, back here for this case? Correct. Back in May of 2019, how were you employed? Uh, with the Clayton County Police Department. And describe your experience in law enforcement, your experience in training that qualified you to work for the Clayton County Police Department. Um, I um, was certified through the basic law enforcement here in the state of Georgia. 
and I worked there as a uniform police officer for three years, and then I worked um, in the criminal investigations division and major felonies for three years. So back in May of 2019, were you a detective assigned to work uh, the case involving the defendant, Hannah Payne? Correct. And just to kind of go a little bit about through the, some of the things that you did for this case, did you respond to the actual uh, scene where uh, the shooting took place? Correct. And is that scene located in Clayton County? Yes. And did you also uh, gather evidence? In Correct. In this case, did you instruct certain witnesses to be uh, interviewed? Correct. And photographs to be taken? Yes. Was one of the things that you did in this particular case con was to conduct an interview of the defendant, Hannah Payne, at the Clayton County Police Department? Yes. And were you aware that she had been transported uh, to the Clayton County Police Department in the back of a patrol vehicle and in handcuffs? Yes. Therefore, did you advise the defendant of her Miranda warnings? Yes. And did you do that using a written document? Correct. This is Weston Freemarket State's Exhibit Number 38. You may. Showing you Weston Marcus State's Exhibit Number 38, do you recognize this document? Yes, I do. And how do you recognize it? Um, with my name and signature um, and the list of the Miranda rights also signed by Ms. Payne. And that's a, a copy of the original. Is the original of these documents, is it always kept in records at the police department? Yes. And is there anything that, about uh, State's Exhibit Number 38 that has been altered or deleted in any way? No. State Tender, State's Exhibit Number 38. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Admitted without objection. And when you have a, a person that you're interviewing go through these rights, is it often uh, that you have them put a time on what time they have signed this waiver? Yes. What time did the defendant sign her waiver and what time did she begin speaking to you in this case? At 8.47 p.m. On the day that the incident occurred, May 7th? Correct. And if you would please uh, indicate the, the, the first right that you advised the defendant that she had. Uh, she was advised um, that she had the right to remain silent. And did she initial next to that indicating her understanding? Yes. The second one? Um, anything she say can and will be used against her in the court of law. And did she initial that? Correct. Indicating her understanding? Yes. Indicating yes. Her. Yes, I'm sorry. And uh, right number three? Um, you have the right to remain, I mean, you have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. Number four? And if you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. And number five? And if you decide at any time to exercise these rights, not answer any questions or make any statements. And did she initial all five of those indicating her understanding of what she was being advised? She did. And the um, statement indicating, I have been advised of my rights and I understand each of those rights, did she also provide her signature acknowledging that as well? Yes. There isn't any. In order to get the defendant to uh, sign that Miranda waiver, was she uh, threatened in any way? No. Was she promised anything? No. Was she offered any hope of benefit whatsoever? No. And based on your observations of the defendant on scene, did she appear to be signing that Miranda rate waiver freely and voluntarily? Correct. Did she appear, based on your observations, to understand the questions that were being asked and the things that were being discussed? Yes. And also, based on your observations of the defendant, did she appear to understand why she was being interviewed? Yes. And once you advised the defendant of her rights, did she indicate to you that she would speak to you? Correct. During the course of that interview, did the defendant ever invoke her right to remain silent? No. Did the defendant ever invoke her right to counsel uh, during the portion of your interview? No. And again, in order to speak to you, was the defendant threatened in any way? Not at all, no. And have you had an opportunity to re-watch uh, the defendant's interview? Yes. And based on your observation of that, did the uh, interview contain exactly your conversation with the defendant on May the 7th of 2019? Yes. Have 
can you tell, talk to the jury a little bit about how the interview room worked at the Clayton County Police Department back in May of 2019? Um, yes, typically um, the interview will um, be comprised of the individual being questioned and two detectives um, will sit in and ask the questioning um, at a table. It is recorded, audio and visually recorded, and, um, and we have conversation and we ask questions in regards to the matters of the case and that person responds. And the things that are being uh, recorded, would you then have any ability uh, to go in and change anything or anything like that? No, I don't have any ability to alter that. And have you, you, have you watched various interviews that have taken place in those interview rooms? Yes. And are you aware that even though you can't alter it, sometimes the audio and the video are like a second off from each other? Yes. When you watch it? Yes. And you uh, this week had an opportunity to rewatch the interview, is that correct? Correct. At this time, the state is going to tender state's exhibit number 39 with the exceptions of the things that we have discussed at the bench that we will place on the record. Any objections? Uh, the same objections we had at the bench. We talked about it, about things that were being admitted, and I think we agreed that <clears throat> certain things would not be discussed, and as long as everybody follows the guidelines, I would have no objection. Okay. Admitted without objection. As we discussed, there are some times when the defendant is alone in the room that we're not just going to watch her sit there for 45 minutes. Correct. So we have both sides have agreed to move it forward. And there are a couple of, of other sections that have been uh, by agreement admit, that aren't going to be admitted that we will move forward as well. Correct. <laughs>
fingernails and putting fake fingernails and putting them in her pocket. Correct. And does she continue to do that until they're all gone? Correct. Judge, at this time we're going to move forward until 8.48.30. The defendant is alone in the room until that time. Okay.
needed it. So I got the money and I called in and I told the dispatch that I was calling in and she told me that she didn't advise it. And I told her I said I'm just getting his tag number. I got the tag number by the time we got to the end of right when I got to Riverdale Road. Um, and we came around that curve and I had an opportunity to get in front of him. Okay. I got in front of him and I stopped in front of him. Um, I got out and I was on the phone with him. I told him, I was like, you need to stop, you need to pull over. And he's like, who are you and who are you? And I'm like, I'm no one, but I'm on the phone with the police. And that's where I was like right there being like, you know, who are you, who are you? I got something for you. I'm like, okay, I said, I'm just telling you, you need to stop. And you need to pull over. And that's when I, I had this back, this, my phone in my hand. And I told him, I was like, you need to stop. And I'm right there by the by his door at this point. Um, he reaches out and kind of like hit my phone out and grabbed my wrist. Okay. He grabbed my wrist. Um, we kind of started going back and forth, fighting. Um, and that's when he punched the gas and he ran into my tire. Um, and he's telling me the whole time, you know, oh, well, I, don't know who, I don't know who you are, I don't know who you are, blah, blah, blah. And I, he, he was laying back, one of me, so I got something for you reaching. And I don't know if he's reaching, if he's, I wasn't watching him, I was trying to pull away from him. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, I had got him off of me, but he had my shirt, and that's when he ripped my shirt. He was pulling yeah. it. I yeah. have it underneath. Okay. Because right. I mean, it's all a little bit. Okay. Yeah, um, I just want to see that, and I'll go out and put it on somebody. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's pulling at it and pulling at it, and that's when I told him, after he reached it, I told him, I said, I have done, I said, and I, I will shoot you. Um, and that's when I reached for it. And because I had reached for it and I touched for it the entire time, I reached for it, I pulled it out. Um, and that's when he pulled, when I pulled away from him is when, because my shirt ripped. It's not that he let go. Um, he, I had it out at that point. He was still coming at me, still yelling at me. I got something for you, you know, you don't shoot me, then shoot me, do it, do it, do it. And he went forward on the door and I pushed it forward with my knee. Went back forward, pushed it forward, thinking he was trying to get out. And I told him, no, no, did the door open at all or did it not open? I see, he was pushing at it. Like he, he rushed down, he went like this. <clears throat> okay. So, from the angle that I was at, I honestly, I don't know if it opened or not, but I could hear him grabbing his door handle. I could hear it, you know, like mm-hmm. just pulling at it. Um, and so that's when I, I pushed the door forward and he grabbed my hand and we were going back and forth. I didn't have my hand on the trigger, but we were going back and forth and he was holding it and he was twisting it and then that's when I actually got my grip on it. And he was turning it and it got faced almost all the way around when I pulled it back and he launched again, like with one hand on me and he launched and he swung and he grabbed, like right right here on the back of my shirt. And when he grabbed is when I, I don't, I honestly, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember telling myself to pull the trigger. It just, so you, you you had to have your finger on the trigger? He, yeah. So you, you, when you're holding the gun, yeah, you so I had it, it was inside had the trigger part. I was like this, I had it like, originally I was holding it like this. Okay. I didn't have it inside, and he's, he's reaching and turning and twisting, and as he's turning it, he's, you know, pulling and we're going back and forth. So of course, I, I bought it for protection. Mm-hmm. Not that I have any intentions on ever trying to use it, but I was, prepared, I was trying to get prepared for whatever I needed to be prepared for, thinking I'd be able to pull away and then just go, you know, get away from him, and that's not how it happened. So when he was pulling at me, and that's when my finger, I put it on the trigger, and he's pulling and pulling. And before this day, have you ever seen that man before in the last that you know of? No, I have never. Um, <clears throat> I know it's, it's probably hard for me to talk about, but when you said like slow it down a lot, you told us what happened, but I was you know, like thinking about things about things. So you you pull around and you stop in front of him, and what happens? Does he so he stops behind you? Yeah. How far between cars would you say? Like close, like far, like um, maybe almost the length of the table. Okay. And then what happens then? And then that's when. I was on the phone with dispatch and he was asking me, he's like, who are you, who are you, and I told him. But were 
you're out of the car. Yeah, I just walked around and told him you need to stop. Okay, so you need to pull over. Which side of the car were you on? I was on his driver's side, and I was at the back of my car. So, y'all on the right side of the road. I'm just trying to, because I know that intersection a lot. So you're, it's like when you come around and you get on 285. Yeah. So, before the, before the ramp. Yeah. yeah okay. So you're, right, you're right in front of him. That's kind of, you crawl crawl. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. right there. Okay. And he was right here, and I had come around, and I was right here. Okay. And when I stopped, I got out, and I walked around. Okay. Telling dispatch, you know, one phone was on the phone with her, and I told okay. her, I said, I'm, I'm here. I said, and he, I said, he stopped. And that's when I told him, you need, you need to stop. You need to stop. Okay. And he's like, who are you? Who are you? I said, I'm no one, but I'm on the phone with dispatch. I'm on the phone with the police. You need to stop. You just caused that accident. And he's like, yeah, okay, I got something for you. And that's when he pulled forward. So he, at this time, it was just words being exchanged. There was no, no, no contact at all yet. Right. Okay. But he pulled forward out. Like, his car went out far forward. To all the way forward to my Jeep. So it struck your Jeep? It did, yeah. Okay. It did. You said it struck the wheel. It, it struck the wheel or that, like, that wheel on the back? Like the, the, no, the wheel on the side of the Jeep. The actual? The actual side. Okay. Yeah. I got you. And that's when I, I was telling him, like, you need to stop, stop. Mm-hmm. And that's when he was reaching. Okay. He hit, he re- hit my hand. I don't know if he did it intentionally trying to throw my phone. So you're standing. So these are two cars. Mm-hmm. Or this, well, this is the car. Mm-hmm. And he's inside the car here. You're standing right at his passenger. Right here. So this is where our, my, my car was right here. So you're so like an angle in front yeah. of him. Okay. So you're angled in. He's here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're standing right here. Okay. And that's when me and him were going back and forth. Okay. But it was more of me in 
me in the vehicle and then wipe him out because he's pulling at me, he's tugging. Okay. So he's pulling, we're going back and forth, he's hitting, he's swinging, I'm trying to hit, but I'm also trying to pull away because the only thing that I know for protecting me and this man is what I have on me. Mm -hmm. Now, by this point, I'm, I'm telling him, that's what I'm telling him, I have a gun. I said, and I will shoot you, and I'm pulling, I'm pulling. This hand was free. I'm trying to just get away to get my, to get my phone. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. So then, that's when he's saying, yeah, okay, I got something for you, I got something for you. Um, I, something about, I don't even know who the heck you are, you're, no, you're nobody, or whatever. And that's when I pulled it out because he's leaning, saying, I got something for you. This is him, he, has, he still had my hand. Okay. He's saying, I got something for you. And you're trying to lean, you're running back away from the car? Yeah, that, well, I'm being pulled in, but I'm trying to pull away. And that's okay. when I pulled it out. Okay. And I told him, I said, you, I told, I told him, I said, you need to stop that I had a gun and I will shoot. And he's like, yeah, okay, shoot me, shoot me. And that's when he, he lunged, he let me go, but he lunged, pushes the door open. Okay. Which is when I thought he was pushing the door open. Um, he leaned forward and he's reaching again. That's when he grabbed my shirt and it ripped it. Okay. Um, so then I, when he's reaching my, I already had it forward, reaching on and it ripped. And I'm thinking here is when I'm trying to say I'm going to get away with the door thing. Mm -hmm. He grabs my hand with the gun. Okay. We're wrestling with it inside. And that's when he's turning it. And I, was, I managed to get it back towards him, and that's when it went off. Okay. So, you pull out the gun. You're right here to look. I'm right. And so I you have it sealed on your right side. Right side. Okay. So, you pull out the gun, and what happens? So, he still got a hold of you, or he has not a hold of you? He, he still got a hold of my hand when I pulled it out. <clears throat> okay. Um, but then that's when he, he lunges. He wouldn't lunge, but he grabs the door. Okay. So he grabs the door. Is he still holding you or is he let go down? He's still holding me in the beginning. Okay. In the very beginning, which is when he, he grabs the door. Okay. He goes to push the door open and when I got away, but he had he had my shirt. Okay. And that's when my shirt was ripped. What kind of shirt do you have on? It's a, it's a, a, a like buttons or not buttons or just okay. But it has like a hole type thing in the middle okay. that, that he was able to grab onto. Okay. Which, sorry, it's just. I know it's hard. Take your time if you need to. I never thought I would. Nobody ever does. It's okay. And, okay. So I had it in my hand at this point. Okay. Are you pointing it yet? Are you. Where, where is it? Is it pointing it pointed at it's, him? It's up. Like this is the window. Uh -huh. And I pulled it out like this, trying to okay. get him away from. Can I get off? He still has a hole in my shirt. When the when he pulled away from the shirt is when the door happened. Okay. I pushed the door with my knee and Do you think the door opened at all? I went forward when I pushed it. Which is so why the door was open. open. It had to have been open. Okay. I mean and that's where all the doors came from on my on my jeans with the outside of the car. Did those the top protect pictures of you? No, 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 so he's, he's trying to turn like this, and I'm trying to push up against the door. After my shirt was ripped, mm -hmm. he went like this, okay. and he was pulling at it. But my hands weren't, were just on okay, the side, right and yeah. Okay. So he's pulling at it, and he's pulling at the trigger area, in the trigger. His hand is in the trigger guard? His hand is in the trigger guard, yeah. Okay. And that, I mean, the specific reason why I bought the one that I bought was because it had the double okay. safety mechanism on right. So I wasn't too worried, I guess, because I didn't have my hand all the way on that. On okay. the back, I could tell. Okay. So he's pulling at it, pulling at it, and that's when he's going like this, and he's turning it and turning it. Turning it away from himself. 
down any between the triangle. And that's when he grabs it, my fingers and his fingers were both in it, and he's trying to pull it. And that's when I pulled my, I pulled, I'm trying to pull my hand out, but I'm not trying to leave the gun there, obviously. Right. So he was pulling it and turning it, and that's when I was able to kind of just like yank it back towards him, and he had it like this. And he's like, yeah, just shoot me, just shoot me. And that's when he lunged. He still had a hold of my hand right here. With the gun? With, yeah, okay. with my hand. And he lunged, and that's when. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you think that he pulled the trigger, or do you think that he pulled the trigger? I, 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 what I told them originally was that I felt like he did. He because did I did not have my finger. I know about the double <clears throat> safety mechanism, so that's why I specifically did not have my finger on the trigger. Okay. Now, when I pulled it back around, after he was, you know, tugging at me and he lunged, he still had his hand on it. And I still have, and I had my hand in on it, okay. but I, it was more so of a matter of force instead of me saying, okay, I'm going to pull the trigger. Okay. Does that, does that yeah, when you, as you're talking about the double safety, I'm not familiar with what kind of safety you're talking about. Springfield, an SD, 9mm. 9mm, okay. Or when you're talking about it, that, so is it like, it's like a double trigger, it's like a trigger and then another trigger and you have to pull them both back in order to, okay. And then also, on the back of the handle. There's it's also like a switch, a safety switch. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like a, um, almost like a,
what are you doing? Are you still moving? Are you talking with your hands? Are you still moving with your hands? Are you yeah, still again, like doing the holding the stuff? Are you pointing? What? How did it? I'm trying to understand. Somebody sitting in the truck. Right. If you're standing outside. Right. How can their right hand reach across to drive your gun? So if trying to go out, you being partially inside that vehicle already. I mean, I was, I was close. Okay. So I wasn't, wasn't leaning forward. Oh, and he's saying still, I've got something for you. And he reached. 
this point, after you grab your arm, I have something for you. Strikes your vehicle. Mm -hmm. What happens next? Then I am my he, my wrist. I pull my wrist away. So you make it alert from him. Yeah, I'm gonna already have my my gun pulled out. All right. So where did you remove your gun from? A hold, a concealed holster. So you have a concealed on your right hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I pulled it out. Mm -hmm. And when you pulled it out, what did you do with that gun? I loaded it. All right, so you racked the chamber. I did, yes. Okay. Which is when he had my shirt. So at this time, he's now wrapping your shirt. Mm -hmm. So you was able to get away, snatch away from him with your left wrist. Mm -hmm. And immediately, did he grab your shirt, or was no, there from step first step to the point? There was a minimal amount of separation. Uh -huh. From the wrist, I had the gun out. When I pulled it away, I literally, it was a one movement. Uh -huh. I was still within a couple inches of his, if, even if that, uh -huh. of his door. And that's when he, he's pushing open the door. All right, why didn't you, he didn't have enough time to retreat, to run away, to hurt me? That's, that's what I had intended on doing after I took out my gun. Okay. But that's what I'm saying, that's when he pulled out. That's what the, that was where the lean happened, the reach. The, I got something for you, I keep pushing open the door, and that's when I pushed, oh, pushed up against the door. I had it in my hand. I wasn't holding it back. Mm -hmm. But okay. I had it in my hand, and I'm at the window, which so, I got in my hand. So we got to reach back. Also, open the door, which you got to lean kind of forward. But you close that, all right? After so the, reach, door. the reach, it wasn't a matter of him just like staying over here. He was just, he was reaching. And then it was okay. a, so reaching means like you might looking for something. Is he still over there trying to find something, or is it just like a just little reach back? From where we were, halfway in and out, both of us, it was I got something for you. Okay, but it is it that you hold that position, or is it something just very quick? It's a I saw, I looked up to see him like this, uh -huh. and when I looked back, he was moving forward. Okay, and so he was pushing his arm. All right, I got you. So it wasn't like a whole like you reach in, reach in. Yeah, no. I got you. All right, so then he, so he leans back, pushes the door forward. Do you ever see what's in his, in his hand? I couldn't, I couldn't see his hand from when we were, from how I was pulled back and the angle that I'm sitting at, and uh -huh. I'm not, I'm focusing on nothing, truthfully. So, you know what I mean? Like, there okay. was no, there was no assuming that there was, assuming that there wasn't. You just, it was, just enjoy it. It was just me just trying to make sure that I was prepared for whatever it may have been. I got you. So at that time, he opens the door, you close it back. I, right? That's when I pushed up against it with my money. What made you do that? What, what, why would you open the door? I'm yelling at him, telling him to stay in the car. I told mm -hmm. him you need to stay in the car. The police are on their way. Okay. And that's when he lunges. Mm -hmm. When you say lunges, that means he like actually trying to like reach out the window. Mm -hmm. Like at this point, he's past the barrier from inside the vehicle to outside. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. And he got on his boat. And or, I mean, he's just coming with his, his right hand. Okay. Because so, he's turned sideways. Like this is the window. He's he's turned sideways as I as he has his hand up uh -huh. against almost like he had it on the armrest. Uh -huh. Um. He had his hand up against the door. That's when I pushed it. And I told him, you need to stay in the, you need, you need mm -hmm. to stay in the car. Okay. And I had it in my hand, I had it in my hand. Uh, are you pointing at him at this time? I'm not pointing at him, but I'm not pointing at <coughs> So where are you pointing at? Where is he At rest with my hand, right here. So you're at the back of the car? No, no, I'm just saying, like, at the window. Okay. And I was actually further away because I had my knee on the, on the door mm -hmm. when I told him that. Okay. So I had my knee on the door. And I'm telling him, you know, you just you need to stay in. I'm not reaching in, I'm not moving, I'm not touching. Do you remember which knee that is? Do you remember which side? Which knee? The right side. Right. Right. So the right knee, so the same side. That's where you're going to Yeah. Okay. So I had it to face this way, and I, I pushed the door forward. All right, tell me how your hands are. Is she holding the gun sideways, holding the point? Like, uh, how's your, what, where's your hand? Like, how are you, where's your hands? My hands are up here. Oh, so you and guys are going to a higher rate. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then he 
fact that I had the gun in my hand and I just wasn't holding it like I'm ready to shoot, so I didn't have the best grip on it. So because of it, I'm, I'm pulling away from him and he's pulling, he's pulling at me. So you're using both hands now to try to push off the car? Or like, it's, like it's more so just my right hand because I'm trying to, you know, do this with him. Okay, with the left hand. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, so I'm, so I'm trying to do this, just trying to push him off of me. Mm-hmm. And the gun is still facing that way. Okay. But that's when he lifts up and he grabs it. Lifts up. Lifts up with his hand, his left hand. So he lifts up with his left hand, mm-hmm. grabs me, lifts up with his left hand, grabs me. Just as my, just as he, he pulls away with my shirt. Like he's trying to, almost like he's trying to pull me closer towards him. But that's when the shirt rips mm-hmm. all together. Mm-hmm. When, he did, when that happens, when he lifts up with his right hand. Okay. But, I'm sorry, his left hand. Okay. Um, and the gun is right at his door. Okay. And he grabs it. Okay. And with his left hand. With his left hand. Yeah. Okay. And at this time, is he still holding on to your shirt with the right hand, or? No, his hand yeah. come off on my shirt. All right. So now what? his hand has come off okay. my shirt. Okay. So now left hand grabbing the gun. What is his right hand doing? Left hand is grabbing the gun. Um, that his then is he immediately pulled his right hand around. So, so he, now he got two hands on your gun. On me, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And at, at that point, how many hands do you have on your gun? I pulled my hand under, and I was trying to pull my actual hand away. Okay. I, mean, I couldn't actually grab the, the gun itself. Because your right hand and his hands are all on okay. it, right. Don't have my fingers in the tr- on the trigger. I had it resting on the side of the trigger. Mm-hmm. That's when he's turning it. Like, he keeps turning, keeps turning. And it gets to almost, like, where my hand is on top of it. His hands are turning it and we're that way, and it kind of going back and forth over here. And when it was in this, is when I. At this point, is the gun more so inside of the truck or more so outside of the truck? It's more so. We were right at the window, right. but when he's turning it, it's outside. Okay, so it's more so outside of the truck. Mm-hmm. That is how you're doing it, and your hands are more out of the truck. Because, yeah, okay. it's like a back and forth thing. You know, okay. but he's pulling, I'm pulling. Um, but the only thing that was keeping so me from the war, you was primarily winning because of the fact that your hands were outside of the truck. It kind of was going back and forth. Okay. The only reason that I was able to pull fully, I I couldn't because he was stronger than I was okay. to actually pull away from him. But the truck and my knee being up against the truck was kind of helping me. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's when I was, I was pulling. We're going back and forth. And the entire time, it was never more so in the car, out the car, when we had the gun. Uh-huh. It was more so like right there. Um, and he's pulling, so my arm is now technically inside the vehicle. Okay. Um, and he's pulling and pulling, and it got to where the gun was pointed kind of that way. Uh-huh. And he had had a hold of the trigger, and the trigger was pulled. Okay. It didn't go off. Because your hand was going to stay. Right. right. So that's when I'm lifting up and I'm trying to pull over. Okay. Um, when I'm lifting up and I'm trying to think that I can just get above him because I have air yeah, in the truck. Yeah. Think that I can just get above him and it wasn't working. So then we're back here, both hands, and I'm yelling at him, yelling at him, telling him that just let go, just let go, let go. And he's yelling, no, just shoot me, shoot me. You said you said you're going to, just shoot me. I'm like, just let go, just let go. That's when his hands and my hand, my fingers were in the trigger guard. They were at the trigger guard. Okay. And that's when my 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 hand was underneath, so I'm still pulling, and he let go with his right hand. His, yeah, his right hand, which is when he was reaching. Mm-hmm. And when he was reaching, is when my hand went in. Mm-hmm. The trigger bar, yes. Um, and that's when he grabbed kind of like this side. I don't if it was somewhere right here. So it was right hand. Mm-hmm. Left hand still on the gun. Left hand still on the gun, yeah. And then he okay. Mm-hmm. And he grabbed 
based on your investigation in this case, that this interview basically took place within a couple of hours of the shooting. Correct. And at the time that you conducted the interview with the defendant, had you listened to the 911 calls? No. Had you interviewed, formally interviewed any of the other eyewitnesses? No. Had you watched the body cameras of any of the uniform responding officers? No. So when you hear the defendant in the interview saying that she was telling Mr. Herring to stay in the car, did you hear her say that? Yes. Were you aware that on the 911 calls, she's saying the opposite, get out of the car? Not at that time, no. And do you, for the record, on the interview, do you hear that the defendant admits that she caused Mr. Herring to stop, that she stopped him? Correct. And even though she goes back and forth repeatedly, do you hear the defendant several times in your interview with her acknowledge that she put her finger on the trigger? Yes. Based on your evidence in this case, after the interview, obviously, did you watch all the interviews and conduct the interviews and watch the media that I just talked about? Yes. Did you receive any evidence in this case that Mr. Herring ever got out of his vehicle in any way? No. And did you hear the defendant acknowledge that Mr. Herring had nothing in his hands? Yes. Did you ever hear her or did she ever tell you at any time about any specific weapon she was concerned about? No. Did the defendant ever mention being concerned about a sheetrock knife located back in the trash or down in the 
behind Mr. Herring's seat. Did she ever mention a knife to you at all? No. Let's talk a little bit about um, In order to be a police officer, do you receive any training as it relates to firearms in general? Yes, ma'am. Um, initially in basic law enforcement training and then con ongoing continuous training um, throughout the year of your career. And have you maintained, you said you're still working in security? Correct. Have you, do you still, are you I'm, still around weapons? Yes, things like that? I am. And I want to go back to one thing before I forget to do it. Do you hear, uh, you asked the defendant specifically if she'd taken any gun safety classes and she told you no? Correct. Professionally, yes. The, you and uh, the defendant kind of start discussing the double safety, is that correct? Yes. Good approach with what's already been admitted as state's exhibit number 15. I'm going to ask the witness if he can uh, step down to show uh, the feature of this weapon, please. Yes. You would yes, make sure, since your back is going to be to the court reporter, if you keep your voice up. Okay. And again, for the record, there is a zip tie. There is no ammunition. The gun is, is safe. If you could show the jury on state's exhibit number 15 what that second safety is and where it is on the firearm. Uh, it's going to be on the back side of the handle um, where my finger is pointing. And you have to grasp the, the handle um, firmly to push that that, um, that that trigger in. And there's also the double trigger. So there's a, a safety feature on the trigger. So in order for this gun to fire, what, what, met, what all has to be happening at the same time? Both the trigger on the back of the handle and also the trigger within the trigger guard have to be pulled. So someone's hand has to be firmly on both. Correct. And you heard on the uh, interview that the defendant claims that the moment she was able to pull the gun, that she wrapped the slide. Yes. In your experience with firearms, how many hands does it take to wrap a slide? Two. So when she has the gun out, who's wrapping the slide, she has both hands. Correct. a video of this incident yes and that was from uh, Henry Williams is that correct I um, can't recall the name but it was from a witness approach with what's already been admitted as states exhibit number 22 position that the hands would have to be in in order to pull the trigger on that gun for it to work. Correct.
Sharp as always. I appreciate it. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Um, now, you were saying that the interview you had with um, uh, Miss Miss Payne, that was a couple of hours after the incident, correct? Correct. Okay. And there had been a couple of interviews with her with other uh, officers, correct? Uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, maybe the initial interview with the uniform officer, but typically... It's not something that a uh, more in-detailed interview on the roadside is not something that's typical. So it wasn't typical for them to do an interview like that? or To my knowledge, it's not my, I, I do not recall them um, having a detailed interview on the side of the road with her. Okay, but when you did your investigation, you saw when the officer put her in the back of the car, walked up with the pad and started asking her what happened, correct? No. So you never went back and witnessed that video that uh, your officer had where he was interviewing? Yeah, so it's been a while. According to my recollection, Hannah Payne was not in the back of a car. She was out. Um, she was standing with an officer. And then, um, and that's when um, he was informed that officer to go ahead and detain him to transport her to our headquarters for an interview. So according to your recollection, they got her, they detained her, put her in the car, straight to the precinct. Correct. Okay. Um, and she sat at the precinct for a long time, correct? Yes, she was there for a while. Okay. And she was, her phone was taken away from her, correct? Correct. Was she ever asking to speak to her, her parents or call her parents to let them know that she's okay? Um, at one point, she did ask. Okay. And did you allow her to call her parents to say, hey, I'm okay? The last time they talked, you know, it's kind of crazy. At that point, she was, I informed her that her parents was already there. Parents were at the precinct? Correct. Okay.
back where um, she she asked to use the phone to talk to her parents. Correct. To basically just say she was safe and correct. Okay. And um, then it was roughly I counted about an hour twenty two minutes before where that she sat in the room. Uh, just sitting there, kind of putting her head down. Which, you know, I don't think we got to see the whole thing, but it was just, you know, just her in a room by herself, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And at that point, you and Detective Moore came in there and started asking questions. Is that fair to say? Correct. Okay. And in these questions, how long, how long have you been a detective there at Clayton County? Um, for three years. Okay. And did you have any other training as a detective before that? Um, you know, just basic law enforcement in uniform. Okay. And basically, uh, as a detective, they teach you different strategies and techniques on how to interview people? Correct. And it's different than they would a law enforcement that's on the street, correct? Uh, not necessarily, no, sir. Did you take any different classes to assist you in uh, the ability to interview no, I did not take an additional interview and interrogation courses. Okay. And have you ever had a, an occasion where you're dealing with somebody and say they cut you off or won't listen to you or, or try to end your sentences? Yes, I have. Okay, and how did that make you feel? Frustrated? Uh, it could be frustrating. Okay. So, and, and in this interview, uh, a lot of times you're asking uh, Ms. Payne some questions and it appears you do not let her finish her sentence or you're trying to finish it for did you see that in the interview uh, no sir what I did recognize is that I allowed detective Moore to ask all the questions initially and I was just asking follow-up questions um, to get more detailed information all right do you recall asking her so did the door open or did you see the door open she says I didn't see the door open but your next question said now that the door is opening do you recall seeing that on the video, or do you recall saying that? No, sir. Okay. Why were you harping on the door? Uh, and I was just interested in regards to, like, um, the positioning of the, the incident, whether it took place inside of the vehicle or whether it took place outside, because um, but it's just with the initial conversation with the uniform officers, um, it was supposedly that there was a physical altercation with Ms. Payne inside of the vehicle striking. Mr. Herring. So you did talk to some of the officers that were on the scene, correct? Yes, the gang um, initial information. And none of them said that the uh, officer took her in the back of the car and interviewed her? No. Okay. Um, now, as I was writing it down, it appeared she was telling about he was reaching for something to open the door or trying to open the door. She couldn't really tell. But she heard kind of grabbing at the panel on the inside. She didn't say panel, but at the door. Um, did you try to open the door when you got on the scene? Um, I can't recall if I tried to open the door, but I, I doubt it. Okay. Did you hear that anybody could get the door open? Um, I can't recall, honestly speaking. Uh, do you recall uh, Officer Ritchie okay. saying that he had to go around to get into the vehicle because the door of the driver's side would not open? Okay. I, I don't recall that, no. Okay. Um, do you, you, um, do you recall anybody else mentioning the door or how about, do you recall how much damage was on the truck? Oh, the vehicle had extensive damage, yes. Okay. And could that damage cause that door to have not opened? There's a possibility, yes. Yes, sir. And so there's a possibility because the damage occurred prior to the encounter with Miss Payne, correct? Right, with the accident. So, so it's a possibility that door could not open. Correct. Okay. And... You stated there, uh, she started talking to you initially and stated that basically she was on the phone with the police or 911 and she'd been told by an officer 
to go get the tag. Do you recall hearing that in your interview? Let's repeat that. Do you recall hearing in your interview that her saying that she was on the phone with 911? Mm -hmm. Do you recall hearing that? Yes. Okay. Do you recall hearing her saying that there was an officer at the scene of the first accident? Oh, yeah, off-duty officer, yes. Okay. But she called him an officer, correct? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, and do you recall her saying the officer kind of was like, go, go get the tag? Yes. Okay. So, uh, from her side, she was telling you that's what was occurring when she dis when she went to get the tag, correct? Okay, yes. Okay, and then you asked the question, why didn't you stop? And she said, well, the person on the phone was kind of like, you know, be safe. So, do you remember her saying that, that uh, she didn't recall them saying, don't chase, don't chase, but you need to be safe? No. Okay. So, you don't remember her saying that the individual on the phone from 911 said that she needed to be safe? I recall uh, she said that um, she was on the phone with 911, and, um, and I don't recall the fact that the person said, just be safe. No. You need to be safe. We want to make sure you're safe. Something okay. along that right, lines. Right, right. Okay. I know it's been a while. Yes. Uh, but we just heard it, and uh, I know you got other things going on. So, um, let's see. Do you recall her stating that she just was walking up to the door, had the phone to show that she had 911 <coughs> on the call to talk to the gentleman to tell him to go back to the accident, correct? Correct. Okay. So... It sounds like she's just walking up with the phone trying to say, hey, you need to go back to the accident. She's not walking up there to get aggressive. She's walking up there to tell him to go back to the accident, correct? That's not what she said to me in regards to, like, just that she was just telling him to go back to the accident in the interview. That's not what I recall from the interview, no. Okay. At the beginning of the interview, uh -huh. she did the quick explanation of what's going on. Right. You don't recall her saying that... I was on the phone with 911, and I walked up the phone to show that I was on the phone with the police or 911, mm -hmm. and was telling him he needed to go back to the accident. Not to hope you need to go back to the accident. No, I don't recall that part of the interview. Okay. But um, you do recall hearing her say that as they were struggling and going back and forth for the gun, that she heard him pull the trigger and it clicked. Uh, and that's when they started talking about the safety mechanisms on the gun, correct? I'm sorry? When, you, when she was testifying or telling you in this interview. Okay. Uh, she was talking about the, the position of her hands. Yes. A lot of times she would say trigger guard. A lot of times she'd say trigger. A lot of times she'd say hand. Do you recall hearing that? Those times, yes. yes. Okay. And a couple of times she said trigger, but she came back and corrected herself to say trigger guard. Correct. Recall, okay. And um, do you recall her saying that as they're pulling for this, that his hand got into the trigger and pulled it and it clipped? No. You don't recall that? I heard the trigger guard. Okay. You didn't hear on that video where it just said, I heard the gun click. He had his finger in the trigger guard. No. I would hate to have to play it all back here, but I believe it was in between. She said nine. I got right around.
Now, as I'm looking for this, I'll, I'll keep trying to move forward. Now, you recall her saying that she saw that the car was stopped, so she pulled in front of the car or the truck. No, sir. Um, do you recall her saying, uh, I honestly don't know if the door opened or not, but I could hear him grabbing at the door handle. Do you recall hearing that? Yes. Okay. And and do you recall her saying not once but a couple of times um, that she had no intention of ever trying to use her gun. I don't recall her saying that directly, but she did try to like, she did like speak towards that, yes. Yes. So I'm gonna, if I may approach your honor. Yes, you may. I'm going to refresh your memory. These are the transcripts of the interview that we just heard. It is the state's uh, exhibit 41. I don't believe they tendered it. They just used it for refreshing. Okay. And I'll just do the same. Do you see in there where it says she had no intention of using it, it being the gun? Yes, I see that. Right. Does that refresh your memory a little bit better? On that pressure. Yes, you may. And what page are you referring to? Number nine. Okay. So, you refresh your memory. So, you do recall her saying she had no intention of using it. The gun, correct? Yes, but she was prepared. Okay. And in that page two, it kept saying uh, that he kept pulling and pulling. And do you recall Detective Moore on that same page asking, so you pulled around and you stopped in front of him? What happens? So it wasn't like she blocked him in, she stopped in front of him, correct? Do you recall hearing that in there? Yes. Okay. All right. And um, a lot of times she kept saying that when she got up there uh, that Mr. the victim uh, the deceased there was asking I, who are you? You're nobody. Do you recall hearing that from the testimony? Yes sir, correct. Okay, and, and she kept saying that he was telling her he had something for you and leaning back, correct? Yes, that's what Ms. Pine said. Okay. Now, did you get a chance to uh, look at the contents of that truck? Yes. And was there any kind of items within that truck that could have been used uh, to cause bodily harm to Ms. Payne? If I, again, this has been a while. Um, to my record, I would have to probably see like the evidence list. But yes, it was like syringes in there. I do believe like there was a sharp tool that we um, did submit to evidence just because she stated that, it, um, that she did see him reaching for something. Um, so. But so I don't think it, a lot of documents. There was a lot of, lot of things in that truck. Okay. So as a detective, and hearing what she had said in her interview, wouldn't you go back to his vehicle and look around to see if items that could have caused bodily harm and take them in as evidence? 
Yes, I believe that was done. So the knife was taken in as evidence? Yes, I believe that was done. Okay. And... Exhibit 23, 24, 26, 30, and 30. I think it goes up to 36, correct? I'm going to stick it. got 26, 30, and 36. I'm not playing this right there. So, you can look at those photos right there. Is that, to your knowledge, and I know it's been a while, is that a fair and accurate representation of what you saw in the vehicle? Correct. Okay. And as you look at those, do you see anything of, of interest that would probably be collected or used to investigate to find out what really was going on? Something had to be of concern, it would be uh, on Exhibit 23, the cutting tool. Okay. And nothing else in those pictures are of any interest to try to explain what was going on or somebody's behavior? The, the syringe caps? But yeah. no, sir. There's nothing else in those pictures that uh, were any interest or any value. No, question. sir. This is the third time he's asked this question. The witness has answered it. We should, I would ask the council move on. Your Honor, I asked one time and talked about a saw. I asked again. He just answered with the caps, and that's it. I haven't asked the third. Okay, so, so I am going to sustain the objection. He has answered. Um, with what he thought uh, might be used as a cutting tool was his response. Correct. And then he got, and then he also answered that they were caps to a syringe, and then he said that was it. And I haven't asked another question since then. I okay, just. So he has answered. So if you move on, Attorney Tucker. All right, you're on. If I may. Show the juror what he was identifying. Okay. Okay. And this was the picture that you stated that there was a saw in, correct? Correct cutting tool. Okay, cutting tool. And you reviewed all of these pictures, correct? Correct. And upon reviewing all of these, it was your testimony that there wasn't anything besides cutting tool and possibly the caps that were of any value. Correct. Now,
there was a picture shown. Yeah, there was a picture shown to you. I mean, Hearing how they were pulling and, and tussling and a shirt being ripped. Um, the way that arm is pulled out, the way it is depicted in that picture, would that be possibly because the hand was being held and it finally got loose? He's a, he is a detective, an investigator. He investigated this scene. He heard the testimony. I think he can give his opinion of the position of that that picture, and from what all he learned in this uh, this investigation, he should be able to explain a theory or what he felt was depicting. So I'm going to sustain the objection. It does call for speculation. All right. Um, Now, when Detective Moore was talking with Hannah Payne, a couple of times she said she had put her finger in, then she stopped. She said, I put my hand on, I don't know what it's called, the trigger, and Detective Moore said, the trigger guard, correct? The circular thing. And she said, yes. Do you recall that? No. When the, you don't know, find my refresh your memory? Page number 24. Correct. Okay. So a lot of times, as she's nervous in this interview, when she's stating certain things, uh, a lot of times it needs to be corrected or clarified, correct? Yes. Okay. And you could tell she was scared, kind of nervous. Correct. Um, and that whole time she was sitting there in the room waiting to be interviewed, did anybody offer up her any water or bathroom or anything? Yes, I believe Detective Milanis um, did when he initially sat her in the interview room. Okay. And you kept asking and, and trying to get clarity that how the positioning or the handling was on the gun, correct? Correct, just okay. how everybody's, what everybody's hands were doing. Okay, and if I may, I I'll use this just to uh, get out of the evidence, that's okay. And once again, this is just an exhibit, a little gun, toy plastic gun. It has nothing, no, it has the abilities, it has nothing in it. Okay, if I may approach her. You may. All right, according to what you heard Ms. Payne saying in the position of what everything was going on, could you show me the way she said she had the gun in her hand? The way she said she had the gun in her hand? Okay. Mm -hmm. And she said that the individual at the vehicle had grabbed her wrist, is it fair to say, with his Left hand, grab the wrist. Yep, grab the gun with the left hand. Oh, grab gun or wrist. Wrist. Uh, okay. Is that fair to say? Yes. So if he's got it like this, and he's got her shirt here, did she say at one time he let go and came to grab the gun with both her hands? Yes. Okay, and as they grab, what is right there at the trigger of the trigger guard? Fingers. Okay. So not just one, but a couple, correct? Correct. 
fair to say hers is on the other side and she's sitting underneath, correct? Correct. Okay. So, she's giving the description and you're clarifying it and asking and, and going into details of what really happened. And as I initially asked about her stating that as he was pulling on the gun and going back and forth that the trigger was pulled. Do you recall her saying that? Yes. Okay. And it was not pulled by her. Do you recall her saying that, that he, had, he had the gun, a better grip on the gun because she didn't have it, a good grip on the gun? No. Okay. And I'll refresh your memory. All right. But you do recall her saying that he had a hold of the trigger and the trigger was pulled. Do you recall that? In the interview? Yes. No, sir. Okay. I'm going to refresh your memory. It's on page 47. Okay. One minute, approach. You may. Talks about pulling on the trigger and all that. Yes, she expressed that um, he had hold of the trigger and the trigger was pulled. Okay. And earlier I asked also that, um, do you recall her saying that, um, that there was a click, like the trigger being pulled? No, okay. I don't recall the click. If I may approach. You may. I know it's been a while, so I'll be able to What page are you referencing? I'll try to tell her. What page are you referencing? 23. Okay. Yes. Okay, so it was stated in an interview that she said she, the trigger was pulled and that she heard a click. Um, she stated that when it first had turned, I heard it click, like the trigger was pulled. Okay. So, and then at that point, she's saying that the gun is being, tried to be pointed back at her, correct? Correct. Okay. So in a scenario like that, with your experience and knowledge and training, if somebody's pointing a gun back at somebody and pulls a trigger and you hear it click, would that not be aggravated assault or possibly attempted murder? Your objection. Obviously, this witness can't speculate to that. It calls for a legal conclusion and is inconsistent with the evidence that's been presented. And we would um, ask this question. I'm, Your response. Honor, I'm talking to him about his interview he had with Ms. Payne. I'm asking from his experience, his training, and being a detective that if a situation as described in this interview and somebody's pointing a gun and it clicks, what charge could be put on the individual? And I think he's well within the scope of his employment, well within the scope of his knowledge to answer that. Your, your response, and she persisted. Judge, I think it's a, a, assuming it, it, it's not a question based on the facts, because the facts are that the defendant had the gun. So asking what happens when someone else is using her gun against her, it's her, the gun is in her hand. So I think to, it's asking a speculation that, that, that Mr. Herring would have ever been charged with anything in this case. So I think so, it's an inappropriate yeah. question and it's misleading to the jury. And I'm asking from his interview that he had with Ms. Payne, where he could ask any question he wants, he heard all of this information. I'm asking from this interview what he did. He, he conducted. If that occurred, what in his training and knowledge and experience he believes that, char, uh, that 
could be charged or that would have been classified as. So the question, as you posed it, does call for a legal conclusion, and so I am going to sustain the objection. Okay. Um, now, you stated that um, that as you sat there and discussed with uh, Miss Payne, um, and after this interview, uh, you had heard her parents were outside, correct? After the interview, correct? Correct. Okay. And at that point, you saw me coming into the precinct explaining I was her attorney and that I would like to speak with her, correct? Correct. Okay. And you left the room, and you allowed us time to speak, correct? Correct. Okay. At any point, did anybody listen to what we were saying in that room? I know there was a lot of officers, a lot of detectives around there. Uh, there's an objection. Do we need to approach for this one? All right, so we won't go any further on me showing up. Um, did you ever tell Miss Payne during that whole period of time, or let, me, let me rephrase, when did you find out that the, uh, the individual shot uh, had become deceased? Um, I part, maybe prior to the interview because I think that's where Detective Moore responded when I responded to the incident location. Okay. And did you ever tell Ms. Payne that the individual had passed away? No. Not to my recollection. No. All right. And did you see and recall in your interview when you and Detective Moore are talking to Ms. Payne, a lot of times you interrupted her or didn't let her finish her sentence? Mm. There were moments that I did um, ask questions, um, direct questions, and she was giving me um, additional information. I was just trying to make sure I gained clarity. Right, but when you were asking the question, was she still talking at that time? Yes. Okay. And generally, two people are talking at the same time. It's not fair to say that they heard the whole question or heard 
the whole um, conversation. Correct. Okay. So, um, and it was you and Detective Moore asking questions simultaneously, or sometimes she'd start it and you'd catch on and come behind it, but there were questions coming rather quickly, correct? No, sir. No? No, sir. Okay. Um, you don't recall just seeing in that interview where you're talking about the door, just specifically the door, and Detective Moore ask a question and you ask a question and she's trying to explain it. You don't recall seeing that just a few minutes ago? The, the concern was the quickly as if it was like rapid fire questioning. Um, but we were asking questions in the interview, allowing Ms. Payne a chance to respond. Also, it was asking follow-up questions and uh, giving everybody an opportunity to ask and to respond. Okay. Now, you did ask um, that when she pulled in front of Mr. Uh, Herring, that you asked, was it like his foot came off the gas or came off the brake and that's why the car moved forward? And she stated that no, it revved up before it took off. Do you recall hearing that? I do recall her speaking uh, that the vehicle revved. Okay. And do you recall seeing where the vehicle had made contact with the Jeep? Yes. And, uh, you, and you did hear her state that it was moving with her, and but it stopped when it got to the Jeep? Yes. Okay. Um, and you heard her at one point say that she didn't have a good grip on the gun, that he may have had a better grip on the gun? I do recall her stating that she did not have a good grip. Okay. And now you stated that there's only one way to load a chamber uh, when it's been holstered, a gun. Do you recall saying that? Yes. Okay. Have you seen those holsters now that you just pull it down a pop and it's it's loaded it? I'm not familiar with that holster, no. Okay. You ever seen those? I've seen it on TV, the commercials that are promoting that it's kind of a pop out, loaded, and gut. You haven't seen those commercials or seen a, a holster that has that? No, sir. Okay. Um, but you did hear that this particular gun had kind of a, a two safety mechanism, correct? Correct. And that would be based for safety, right? Yes. Okay. And I heard that you said when you asked, when you were asked, she didn't have any training, gun training, and you said professional. You meant professional training or professional gun training, or what did you mean when you said that? Yeah, she expressed that, like, um, during the interview, it was like when I said professional, like, actually, like, uh, attending a gun fire safety course. That's what I was um, hint, um, asking in regards to, like, professionally. All right. So would that be a state certified, or would it be something you would pay that makes it professional, or? Uh, Both. Okay. And so when you go to these gun ranges and they sit you down and you watch a video and then they tell you a little bit about the gun, that would not be considered gun safety um, class? Probably gun safety class for that particular location for the firing range. But they talk about the safety of the gun, how to hold it? Yes. Okay. And throughout this interview, um, you did hear her say that she had some scratches and some marks on her, her person. Yes, sir. Okay. And were they consistent to the story that she was telling you about what happened? Um, yes, in regards to grabbing of the shirt. And of the wrist? In the wrist, yes. Okay. And... Pictures were not taken until after the interview, after it was brought to their attention, uh, that she had some marks. Do you recall when uh, Detective Moore decided to take pictures? Yes. When, when did she decide to take pictures? I think we requested the photographer um, after our interview. Okay. Um, and you asked a specific question of, you know, why why would you go why would you go after this car? Why would you follow this car to get a tag? And she said that she's a people person 
and she was just trying to help out. Do you recall that? Yes. Is that a bad thing? No, sir. Okay. Um, now, when she was stating that uh, he had something for her, that she was nobody. And was leaning back. Did that kind of spark your curiosity of what could have been happening inside that truck? Yes. Okay. And upon looking at the pictures and everything else, um, there wasn't really anything that stuck out to you besides that saw. You, did you ever? Did you ever see the knife that was in the truck? No, sir. Nice enough to put all right, this and then that which helped out. Mm -hmm. that out. Okay. If I can bring to your attention defense exhibit number 25. You stated that uh, looking through the truck, the content, that you never saw that die? Yes. Yes, you did see it or yes, you didn't see it? In regards, yes. I did not see this in the photos that you presented, but yes, I think that's the cutting tool that we submitted to evidence. Okay. And... Uh, they ever get tested for any fingerprints or DNA? Uh, not to my recollection. I'm not sure. Uh, and did the trigger of the gun ever get submitted for DNA or uh, fingerprinting? I'm not sure if that did happen for DNA. And based on the testimony of whose finger was on the trigger or not, did you feel that was necessary to ask to have them do a... Uh, a DNA analysis or fingerprint analysis? Um, not necessarily. So it wasn't any concern of yours to find out whose finger or whose DNA was on the trigger? Um, it was, there's a possibility that both things could have been on the firearm or it could have been just one. But wouldn't you want to know the answer of that? Yes, but I don't, I, at that particular time, I, I'm not sure if that's what was requested. Um, during the investigation, but and if it was not requested because uh, I didn't think it was possibly a determining factor. And I'm not trying to put you on the hook for somebody else. Did you request a, a fingerprint or DNA? To my record, I cannot recall specifically, no.
Now, numerous times in her interview, she kept relaying that she was telling him to stop. To stop, correct? Correct. Okay. And she stated that um, that basically, you know, they both were kind of scuffling back and forth. He was hitting her. She was trying to hit him. Uh, do you recall if there were any visible bruises or any kind of cuts on Mr. Heron's face, body, arms? No, sir. I, 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 not to my re recollection, I don't even think I even um, viewed Mr. Heron because he was already at the hospital. Okay. Did you ever get a chance to review the pictures of Mr. Heron? Um, no, sir. Not to my recollection. Did you ever get to review the uh, autopsy? No, sir. Now, as you were standing at the site, I noticed at one point you look up and you look at the camera. Um, do you recall that? Like, uh, you know, the roads have cameras all up and down it. No, sir, I don't recall looking up, looking at a camera. Okay. Do you recall if there were any cameras around that area? Um, maybe traffic cameras on the traffic lights, but they're not for recordings. Okay, so um, defense exhibit number four. As you look at all these poles and everything around that roadside, does that appear to be cameras? No, sir, not to me. Okay. I may have a better picture of the four for you here. All right. Um, Experience of being on the road and seeing, you know, the cameras and the flock cameras they use on the road. Is that fair to say that I, that appears to be a camera? No, sir. If I may. from that photo that those are cameras? To me, they do not look, appear to be cameras. And you're familiar with that road? Yes, sir, Road. That was, I think, mean, Forest Parkway. Oh, okay. okay. And have you ever seen any cameras on that road before? No, sir, not to any of my recollection. Okay, thank you. At this time, I am going to give it back to me. It is now. 
Okay, before uh, we bring the jurors back in, um, I want to make everyone aware in the courtroom that it has been brought to my attention that there may have been an attempt to make contact with one of the jurors. I just want to instruct you all that it is not appropriate. I did give those instructions at the beginning of the case, and so uh, no one is to make contact with the jurors. They're here because they're committed to fulfilling their civil duty to sit on this case, and it's not appropriate for anyone to try to make contact with them while they're sitting as jurors on this case. Anyone who tries to do that, part of what I can do is that uh, you will forfeit your right to be in the courtroom um, among any other measure, measures that the court deems appropriate. So, everyone is advised. Thank you. Okay, counsels, are we ready to proceed? We are judging. Okay, uh, there is any you can bring the jurors. And just want to come in and just for timing purposes, we're not going to ask any additional questions and we'll rest. Okay, so, okay. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Does the state have any redirect for this witness? I appreciate the time to consider that. The state has no further questions of this witness, and we would ask that he be excused and yes. be allowed to return to North Carolina. Yes, you're excused. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Safe travels. this juncture, um, all the evidence uh, is in, um, and the court at this point will conduct what is known as our charge conference with counsels in this case, and therefore it is an appropriate time to allow you to have your lunch break. Um, it's now 12.05, I would instruct you uh, to be back by um, 1.45 p.m. Again, the instructions that I've previously given still apply. And so you're on break at this time. Have a good lunch, and I'll see you back at 1.45. Thank you. And thank you for adhering to the time frames. Oh, before you go, before everyone goes, let me just apprise you of what's going to um, occur next. Of course, we will do our charge conference so that we're agreed as to what charges you will be given, and then both the state and defense counsel will be able to give you what is known as closing arguments, and then we will release the case uh, to you at that point. So that's what you can anticipate this afternoon. Have a good lunch. Councils, can we move into our charge conference? Yes, Judge, I'll begin with the charge conference. Okay. <clears throat> okay. 
Attorney Tucker, did you receive that email? I did, Your Honor. Okay. I did receive the state's uh, comments. I'm in full agreement with that. I had, a, um, had an example of a jury charge that I was going to go through and see. I think for the most part it is in order for those charges to be wondered where to put it. Okay. I was going to propose for the court and to the state that from the previous cases, the previous um, jury charges, this is where I would suggest it goes. And it's a curious suggestion to take it or have the court can it. I believe the state made the most, went through it and said there's certain highlights on certain things that you know, I agree. Okay, would, would it help to have a printed copy? Yes, ma'am. It would? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right, let me uh, arrange for that. How about you, um, Chief Assistant? Do you need a printed copy? I don't want to waste another three <laughs> pages. <laughs> I'm fine. It should be three pages now. Let's cut that. And which charge was that, um, Attorney Tucker? And, Your Honor, it's, it's basically the order. Um, and I was going to take it and go through and see if it was placed. I know that it was kind of confusing my phone and looking at her having the charge pattern charges up. My phone didn't have the pages number. So I just put little notes and I can go to that once I uh, once I've seen how it is, the, I saw it briefly last night looking at it, and I think there was one or two that, and it's purely a preference. I don't think it's something that's, you know, any kind of abuse or anything like that. I just think it's a preference, and I was going to give that suggestion. All right. So you can have my copy on delivery, the other copy, so you can be with me. You. And um, for those of you in the courtroom, this is all technical, legal, legally. So, I mean, for those of you who are here, you're certainly um, welcome to stay, but you know, it's, it is technical, so you can go for lunch and be back. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to, I'm just saying it's <laughs>
want to rush to the bathroom right. before, <laughs> before they cut it off. Don't drink any water. <laughs> For those of you that just re-entered the courtroom, just be on notice that there has been an occurrence in the jail. So on this side of the courthouse, they're going to be cutting off the water for probably half an hour or so. So just to make you aware.
I know we had some discussion about whether it would be a prior statement or prior inconsistent statement. Are we okay with that charge? That's no longer the pattern, but I have indicated to counsel I would not object to his request for a prior inconsistent statement. Okay. All right. So we'll go with that. Thank you. And I think it's just that uh, it was the single witness account. It's fine. In that, in that area, it's fine. That was okay. the only one I really saw. Um, the single witness corroboration? Yes, ma'am. And it's fine where it's at. Um, right. So put a little close and done. Okay. And it does say bare suspicion instead of grave suspicion. But once again, that's different for that. I'm not going to argue that. It's across what it's supposed to do. So. Okay, uh, so, so you're saying it should be grave? No, it, it's not. I mean, like I said, that's. I'm okay. not going to sit there and nitpick like that. All right, I, I have approach. another copy, oh, so okay. you can hold on right, to that. So everything, there are no objections to the charges as outlined. That's, can I just look at his written yes. report? Make sure the highlights that I'm seeing on my computer aren't visible to the jury. Right. I mean, on page six, it's barely visible where it's highlighted where I changed it from his to her on the second line. Page six. Anything that matters. Mm -hmm. You can just see a slight gray shading. I don't think it's oh, going to be. Oh, where it's changed to her. That's where I changed it. So that's why I'm seeing the highlight. But I don't know that that's. I'll show the counsel and see if he has any issue with it. So right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tucker indicates he's fine with it. Okay. There's a little comma on page 25. I'm just going to wipe it out. It's nothing. I said the floating comma? Yes. <laughs> floating comma. On the DNA. I just wiped it out. It's something towards the bottom and the last page as well. We the last page. I think it's the page 51 has three floating dots. Okay, I'll just wipe it. I don't know why they're there, but there they are. I took it out. And I'll just use this copy to send back with them. Do you see anything else? So you reviewed the printed copy and everything's okay. So there are no objection to the charges that will go back to the jury. Not from the state. Okay, thank you. None for the defense. Right. And then if we could just determine what evidence is going to go back uh, with them, that would be great. Thank you. And you're gonna, I want you can put on the record what's going back so that I'll double check before yes. it goes back. So, you can this, this is the
I'm making a copy of the indictment to go back. able to go back with the jury the uh, I think we have an agreement but let me put it on the record the state's exhibit three and four are 911 calls and those discs cannot go back state's exhibit six is also a 911 call we agree that when and if the uh, Evident, when the evidence goes back that the jury can have states exhibit 15 which is the firearm but they cannot have the ammunition which is states exhibit number 17 at the same time so when and if they request to see the ammunition then they would have to give the gun back and we could trade out okay. the states exhibit uh, 19 is a video the body worn camera States Exhibit 20 is the cell phone video. <clears throat> States Exhibit 39 is the recording of the defendant's interview. As it relates to defense exhibits, States Exhibits 2, Eight. Is, is that state's exhibit? I'm sorry, defense exhibit. Defense exhibit two, eight, nine, and 38 are all written statements, and written statements are not permitted in the jury room. They are permitted to come into the courtroom to view any of them that they wish. Defense exhibit number 10 is the autopsy report which is again also considered a written statement and is not permitted in the jury room. The only other thing that I see is the portion of uh, the defense exhibit 40, which is the portion of the body cam uh, that contains the defendant's statements from the back of the patrol car that would not be allowed to go back. That is correct, Your Honor. And, okay. Um, so we'll just based on the record, specifically what's going to go back. So I have what <laughs> is that. Not, I have what is not going to go back. Okay. So just to have it on the record. Yes, Judge. Uh, what was not true. And I believe it's there not. was um, one that they used to refresh. Haywood, and y'all kept that back over here. It's not admitted, so it right. couldn't go back anyway. Right. 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 The uh, what we show would go back is states exhibit one, which is the inline photograph. Two and two A, which are the maps. <clears throat> Five, which are the bugle swabs. Seven through fourteen 
our photographs of the scene that would go back. 15 is the gun, 16 is the holster, 17 is the ammo, and 18 is the shell casing. So we have just agreed that 15 and 17 can't be in the jury room at the same time, but they can have access to both of those. Okay. 21 and 22 are photographs that would go back. 23 through 29 are photographs of the vehicles during the search. There is no states 30, so that was the photograph of the medication list that was excluded. 31 is the inventory sheet. Yes, sir. I still have written, the, I mean, <laughs> I think to be consistent with everything else, probably not. But, uh, I'm fine with that, Judge. I didn't, I didn't notice that, but it is a technically a written statement, so we will add 31 to the ones that don't go back. It is the inventory from the victim's truck. Okay. So, can you, do you mind finding that? Uh, states 31. Can we pull that out? Okay. Just so we don't have any accidents while I'm putting this on the record, and then states 30. 2 through 35 are autopsy photos that would go back. 36 is the projectile that would go back. State did not tender 37 because it was the body-worn camera, which was used as a defense exhibit, so we did not have to use a 37. Okay. And then 38 is the Miranda form from the state side that would go back. Okay. Now... I'm gonna, it's gonna be out of order because. Well, you <laughs> there was no real order to how this went. So, um, I show that defendants four, six, and seven are photographs that would go back, and five. This defense. 12 is a demonstrative of the human body that we're fine going back. Defendants 14 through 22 are still shot photos that would go back. Defendants 23 through 26 are photographs of the victim's car that would go back. Defendants 27 through 35 are photographs of the defendant that would go back. 36 is a photograph of the vehicle that would go back. And 39 is the defendant's uh, shirt that would go back. Okay. That sounds about right. Isn't okay. It? All right. Okay, so um, it seems that we've taken care of what needs to be taken care of, and you can go to lunch, and we'll be back at 1.45. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Thank I'm going to hopefully be doing a PowerPoint, so um, I'll, bring the, I'll bring the material. Hopefully, we won't need IT. Uh, to, you know, simply you plug it in. If we can plug it in from there, if not. But if so, I would request them to assist your skittles. So, oh, so for, for the IT yeah. to come yes. in. Just if necessary. I mean, it's he showed me the other day, and it should work the same way. Right. Uh, well, just out of an abundance right. of caution, we'll have them here. So you want them here at 145? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll request. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good lunch. Good